Hello everyone, good evening. It's Dr. Vaughn and uh, I'm going to make a hopefully quick video about one of the most annoying things about your book and MindTap and that is they give you this multiple regression model and we have the tools to build a multiple regression model, no problem, but they ask you about doing this 95% prediction interval and yet if you look at the textbook itself they don't actually tell you exactly how to do this. They just say it's beyond the scope of our book and go use some piece of technology. But the piece of technology that they um, want you to use, it's not actually done for you in Excel. And so, um, you know, I don't know where they think you're supposed to kind of get this information from. It is actually a rather complicated formula to get this exactly right. But I'm going to show you uh, a, a fairly simple way to, to, you know, get this right to get the points for this. And what we're gonna do is actually do an estimate of the critical piece, the complicated part of the formula, which is called the um, standard error of the prediction. Uh, the rest of the formula is pretty straightforward, but um, I'm gonna show you how you can actually get this right, like I did here, using that, uh, an approximation to this standard error of the prediction. Right, so the first thing that you're going to want to do, we're on exercise 15.29 in assignment 15.6 practice. I haven't looked at number two. It's probably going to be pretty similar. I just pulled up the data file, loaded it up into Excel, and you'll get this stuff up here. This is all the data instead of having to cut and paste or type it in. The next thing that I did is I ran it using data analysis tool pack, the multiple regression. So how did I do that? Data. Data analysis. Oops. Data. Data analysis. Regression. Okay. And then you put the X, the Y range, which is the gross revenue, and then the X range. And you want both of the X values in here. I did include labels. I put in my 95% confidence level, even though it doesn't really help us. This is going to populate these things over here, which are the confidence intervals for each of the coefficients in the model that you build. It's not the same as the 95% prediction interval, which is what this question is asking you about. All right, and then the only other thing is I put the output over here in cell E2, and it generated this whole um, table, which should look fairly familiar to you by now. All right, so, so that's all my multiple regression. Um, and then I'm gonna take these coefficients right here, and I'm gonna build the model. So the intercept plus the television advertising coefficient times whatever input variable you want to use, that's one of our independent variables, and then plus the coefficient times whatever other value. So I did that over here. Now I put in the kind of input values, and they give me these values, 3.5 and 1.8 in the stem of the problem. It's uh, right here, 3.5 and 1.8. Those are the input values for television advertising and the newspaper advertising. And then I computed the y hat, the predicted y value, by taking equals the intercept plus the coefficient times the input value plus the coefficient times the input value. Right, so there's my formula in using cell references from Excel. And I got this value 93.587, you know, and you can round it if you wish. And, and, and that's what I entered into this box right here. 93.588 is the rounded value to three decimal places. And, you know, again, you can make Excel do the rounding for you if you want by using these cool tools up here. All right, so now the last thing to do is to find these 95% um, prediction interval. And so in order to find this 95% prediction interval, I need to find first the T value. Now the T value you can either use TINV with no dot in it or T dot INV, and then I'm going to take a 1 minus alpha divided by 2. So it's a 95% confidence interval, which means I have a 5% alpha, and that 5% alpha gets split into two tails. So the upper tail is 0.275, and I want the T value that separates the lower amount from the upper tail. That's the positive T value. So I'm going to put in 0 0.0975. That'll always be the case if you're doing a 95%. And then for the second one, which is the degrees of freedom, you want to put in the residual degrees of freedom. 
So I just did a cell reference to F14, which is where I can find the residual degrees of freedom, which in this case is five. So that command t.in returns this value 2.57. That's fairly standard. You know, it's that 2.57 is 95% for, uh, you know, large samples and, and so forth. So then here's where I'm going to do this um, standard error, and I'm going to approximate it. The real formula here is pretty complicated. So instead, what we're going to do is just take the published standard error from the regression statistic summary, 0.64. Instead of using that number, we need to bump it up a little bit. And the way we're going to approximate it is that the, uh, the standard error of the prediction is about 10% more than the standard error of the regression model. Right, so I'm going to take the formula I'm going to use here is just take this number, the standard error, and multiply by 1.1 because that increases it by 10%. Right, so the uh, the approximate standard error is then 0 0.7068, and I don't even have to worry about it. I'm just letting Excel do all the kind of calculation. Finally, I just need to get the prediction interval. There's going to be a low end of it and a high end of it. And for the low end, you're going to take the point estimate, which is the y hat you computed, minus the product of the t and the approximate standard error of the prediction model. So in my case, that's a12 minus b14 times b15. And then for the high end, I'm going to take the same point estimate, a12, plus b14 times b15. The only difference between these two is minus versus plus exact same formulas. That's it. These are the numbers that when rounded to three decimal places will get you the low and the high end of your 95% prediction interval. All right. I hope you all are doing well and I uh, wish you the best. Please let me know if I can do another video like this in the next 24, 48 hours. Uh, and I know that our class is coming to an end. Uh, it has been a uh, pleasure uh, being able to work with you. I also thank you for all your prayers and patience with me as uh, I went through uh, some difficult times. Anyway, thank you very much. I hope you all have a great night. See you again.